Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, I'm some guy, and what I have for you today is a rather curious game. It's called Plan Z, and it was developed by Gone Meg Yang. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Anyhoot. Now, this game began life as a YouTube video series that was essentially a choose your own adventure, where you would click on annotations and it would take you to another video. Yeah, it's like a choose your own adventure, just without the paper. Anywho, this game was then gussied up and ported over to cell phones. And then from there, it landed on Steam. And that's really all I know about this game. I do know three brothers worked on the original YouTube series, but beyond that, I know jack squat about this developer. Hell, I don't even know where they're based out of. So with that said, let's check out this game made by a bunch of mystery men. Open Gangnam Style! Now I can't decide if that video I just showed you, which was made by the developer, is magnificent or some form of an abominable cash -in. But hey, at least it shows you their excellent 3D modeling skills, set to Gundam style. Although you think Thriller would be more fitting, but nevertheless. Hopefully you're hyped, because I'm about to show you this game now, folks. <laughs> so the game starts off with a lovely first-person perspective in a particularly disgusting-looking world. While it sounds like our hero is at stool and is rather struggling there, I can't help but notice that goddamn this video is compressed and full of artifacts. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this video was ripped right off of the YouTube channel. Yeah, the sound design's strange. It sounds like the yell is coming from... What, some sort of sound machine? Behind the zombie? Or maybe that's just the echo of the man finally passing a particularly difficult log. Yes, the arms are very unnatural with their placement. They appear to be jutting out of his ears. Perhaps the zombie apocalypse also involved a couple of mutations. So we kill a zombie whose face reminds me of a gigolo. And then, we get a choice. Should I pick up the gun, or should I do something with a cabinet? And forever being a fan of Alone in the Dark, of course I'm gonna move a cabinet when the option presents itself. Yeah, get a good look at our hero there. Oh my god. What the hell is up with those dark lines everywhere? I guess it's a zombie apocalypse, so you can't really do laundry or wash. But man, this character model, it looks like if Sin City vomited color. Hey, it's a reference to a movie. So now we're going to hear one of the worst sounds known to man for way too long. So this appears to be a completely different dude than the guy that we saw in the intro, because that gentleman was a blonde. Or maybe it is the same dude, except this is before the color fell out of his hair. I really don't know. So anywho, we get a look at Blondie McBrown here over here in his daily routine. It's terribly boring and not interactive in the slightest. So let's fast forward to the part where we actually get a click on something again. So our hero picks up the most starch suit ever, or maybe it's made out of paper because this is what it sounds like when he puts it on. Dude, use some fabric softener. Anywho, after a save point, we get to navigate this world. And this is one of those games that you can only click on essential things. Yep. And this game also features a fixed camera a la Resident Evil. You know, those camera angles that aren't super helpful but seem kind of dramatic. Anyway, we wander around this room and tone, hey, there's a woman sleeping in this bed. Turns out it's a guy's wife, and he has the most robust conversation with her. Oh, 
the best romance ever written in video games. You can tell their love springs eternal. Anyway, she tells us what our main quest is for this part of the game. Find our wallet. We don't know where it is, so we ask her straight up, and she's like, it's on the nightstand. So then we pick up the wallet, and now we just can't walk through the door because the game doesn't know we have the wallet yet. Nah, we gotta use the wallet on the door, and then the game knows it can proceed to this delightful cutscene that sets up the entire game. So our dudes awkwardly handling a spoon and begin to eat whatever the hell's on that plate that we can't see. Maybe it's brains. Well, he better get used to a steady diet of them, because based on the newspapers that he's reading from his tablet, and guess what? A mysterious virus is going on, blah, 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 blah. Game, you call Plan Z. We know there's zombies in it. Would you please cut to the part where the zombies are and stop trying to set stuff up with a character whose hair I'm not entirely sure stays the same color throughout this game. So our hero appears to own a sports car that was made in the early 90s and he gets to meet his first zombie and have a very, very delightful action scene with her. And don't you worry guys, it's completely non-interactive. I can just stay here and smoke black and milds and chug some brews. My god, this fight scene goes on for so long that it gives they live a run for its money. But our hero does inevitably get the upper hand on an old lady by pulling off what I assume is some sort of bizarre yet amazing wrestling move. My god, that's so magnificent, I need to see it again. <sighs> Maybe one more time, but it's tiled. Oh, oh so beautiful. Anyway, the guy beats up the old lady and just leaves her in the garage, cause that's the responsible thing to do there. Leave a zombie sealed in your garage. I'm sure no ill will come of this. Now even if you think, hey, this guy doesn't know it's a zombie apocalypse yet, so you can forgive him for locking up his neighbor in the garage, you'd still think he'd call the popo or something. And furthermore, I haven't brought this up, but you can't actually die in this game if you make the wrong choice. Like here, if I decided not to close the garage, why? Well, let's just watch and see. Bad plan, try again. You're right there. So let's go into the other universe, where we're still doing a bad plan, and going over to our neighbor's house and leaving a zombie alone in the garage. Now allow me to read this line out loud to you guys. Bill, I need to talk to you. Hmm, the door's open. He just says it like that, huh? Completely natural dialogue in this game. And forget Helen of Troy, guys. That face right there could launch a thousand ships. So now I'm dreaming McDream boat inside of Bill's house, and sure enough, he finds Bill. And Bill's like, yo, my wife attacked me. And we get a little cutscene that pretty much says Bill's life was awesome, and then one day his wife attacked him. So Bill and his wife had a fantastic dinner of what I assume is an oil slick. And then they watched nature and, well, and spooned the night away. But then, oh no, come morning, when Bill's dressed in his captain's shirt. Look, he's got the little patches on his shoulder. His wife viciously attacked him. And he, well, had to pull a wrestling move on her too. Yeah, he pushed his wife down the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, game, you're delightful. But anyway, our hero now decides, maybe I should call the police. But oh no, he can't use a phone because it doesn't have a battery in it. So now we have to look for a battery. 
Oh, maybe we should just ask the guy who's bleeding out and he just points us in the right direction. Yeah, the battery's over here. And we put it in the phone. And then our hero informs us that guess what? He didn't bring his cell phone. You know, hero, you probably should have mentioned that before we started looking for the phone. Because the whole time I was looking for the battery, I was like, why don't you have a cell phone? Why? Have cell phones not been invented yet? It's kind of hard to ascertain what year this game actually takes place in. Oh no, who would have guessed during the zombie apocalypse emergency services are all hung up? Any hoot. Bill's like, hey, give me a first aid kit. And our hero's like, sure, I'm dressed like a little dry hard. I'll go ahead and do it for you. And while we're rifling in the bathroom for the first aid kit, guess what happens? Oh no, Bill's a zombie, and our friend here, who appears to have his suit pasted onto him. And also, is it just me, or does he look like some weird little Mormon? Well, he has to commit one of the ten deadly sins now and kill a man. What a shame. You know, now that we got this long-ass fight scene going on, let's talk about graphics. Now, normally I'm not very picky when it comes to my video game's graphics, but I have to say, this is one of the ugliest games I've ever played. Just from a stylistic standpoint, all the color is washed out, everything looks so dirty and grimy and disgusting. It's like this game is Florida or something. Anyway, after that long-ass non-interactive cutscene, I get to make a choice. I decide to attack the zombie with a toilet lid, and sure enough, it was the right choice. Who would have thunk it? So we killed Bill, a character whose name I just learned, and I guess we're gonna go back home now and check on our wife. And you know what? Now that I think about it, I don't know what our character's name is. Has it been mentioned yet? But anyway, as I said, the character needs to go home now. Surely everything's hunky-dory, oh crap. Yeah, all the zombie we left in the garage kind of got free in our house and has appeared to have attacked our wife. Yeah, hero, great move there, great move. So yes, our hero was a dumbass and pretty much doomed his wife to the agony of becoming a zombie because he decided to leave the lady in the garage. My god, what a dumbass. I don't want to say he deserves it, but I want to say, my god, that was a really stupid game. But anyway, to redeem himself. So now we're going to try to call 911 again. You know, to get some help for our wife who's been bit by a zombie. Yeah, and there's still a busy signal. Hmm, it's like we got a great A apocalypse going on now or something. So we return to our wife and she's like, hey, get me a first aid kit. Yeah, we're pretty much reliving the exact same thing we just did with Bill. And it's barely been five minutes, game. Good lord, are you that unoriginal? So I heard we wander around the house for a while, find a key to open a cabinet, and good lord! Look at that cabinet! Look at that giant medicine! Who the hell needs aspirin that's that gigantic? And also, what are those red things in there? Oh my god, is that blood? What the hell is going on in this house? So our hero returns to his wife with a fresh first aid kit and oh, guess what happens? And by the way, is it just me, or does that first aid kit look like a book? It changes color. There's a lot of weird continuity errors with this game. It's like colors change, characters, models, they change their clothes. It's like the production values of this game are next to nothing. Huh, who would have thought that? Now, while the game tries to make it seem like, oh, maybe the wife wasn't bit, we all know she was bit because this is a very shallow game here. And frankly, I just can't stand this cutscene. It is so goddamn washed out. So anyway, the wife passes out and our hero's like, I better tie her up because she's going to become a zombie now. Because he knows exactly how this zombie virus works because he's watched zombie movies. And sure enough, that's what we do. We wander around the house, find the necessary item, return to the wife, and, well, watch him tie her up in all the terrible animation glory that this game has. Yeah, the duct tape just spawns in and he appears to have gone very excessive with the whole let's make a mummy out of duct tape thing. 
But anywho, the guy's like, oh, I need to clean her wounds now. And don't you be thinking for one second that you could use a first aid kit. Because the first aid kit is utterly useless in this scenario because it contains no disinfectant. Because why the hell would a first aid kit contain such a thing? So now we gotta wander around the house. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, this pointless meandering through the house is what makes up the bulk of the gameplay. Oh god, it's terrible because the camera angles are atrocious. Oh, so much fun. But hey, I eventually found what I needed and I used it on the lady. And sure enough, oh my god, she's a zombie now. Who would have ever thought that was gonna happen? Oh no, the character that told us where the wallet is is now a zombie. I cry. Every time. But sure enough, our hero tries to call 911 again, just cause that's his go-to move at this point. That and trying to find first aid kits. But hey, at least dialing 911 seems to change the protagonist. We now are a cop, who's trapped in Resident Evil 2. For real. <laughs> So we wander through poor man's Resident Evil 2 built using Unity. Eventually, we find a cop who's like, Hey, here's something for you. Go ahead and do your thing. And oh yeah, this cop, Leo, that name sounds familiar for some reason. This is his first day on the force, and the zombie apocalypse has struck. So he opens up some doors and then finds a gun. Fantastic. And now, the gameplay changes slightly. It becomes a first-person shooter for no particularly good reason. <laughs> The hit detection in this first person sequence is some of the worst I've ever seen. And that's not me joking. You go for body shots and the bullets just seem to pass through them. These zombies may be non-corporeal. Oh my god, it truly is the apocalypse. So after enough shooty shooty bang bang, we get some of the laziest puzzle design known to man. We're in a room. We have to push something, and that causes a sword to fall off, which we use to unlock a door. Because this game's puzzle design is atrocious. And yes, I've been using that word a lot today. It was my word of the day. But the point still stands. Look, there's a big-ass arrow saying push in this direction. Why even bother to have a puzzle at that point? And speaking of why do they bother to even put in puzzles, we unlock the door and go into a steam room, and there's a dying cop who's like, hey, you should take the valve off of that thing from over there and put it on the thing from over there, and then the steam turns off and you can walk past the steam. Yeah, again. Why even bother having a puzzle if the game's just going to explicitly tell you exactly what to do with no possibility of error? Jesus Christ, game, why do you even bother? Oh, hey, another first-person shooter sequence. These are not very good at all. Yeah, it's just as bad as the last sequence, but hey, this time we get a shotgun that doesn't seem to do all that much. Well, that wasn't particularly interesting at all. So anyway, I assume the police guy escapes from the police station because the game then goes back to the other dude who's just like the Mormon whose wife has become a zombie. And I also assume what happened with Leo in the police station all occurred over the course of our hero being on the phone waiting for the police to pick up. So anyway, now our hero has a bright idea to try to find his daughter. Yes, he has a daughter, but first he has to put his wife down in the basement, cause, you know, the daughter can't see that mama's a zombie now. That would be very upsetting. So the game wastes more of our time by making us click on all the blood pools around the house and then we can finally go find the dude's daughter. Yeah, I'm not gonna show me clicking on random objects until, well, eventually all the blood went away because it's incredibly boring. Just like when we first talked to our daughter. So at first our hero's like, hey daughter, come with me, we need to flee to the police station. Cause again, this dude is just filled with the brightest of ideas. Hmm, no one's picking up the phone when I call 911. There seems to be zombies everywhere. I know I'll go to the police station because surely nothing terrible is happening there anyway. But nevertheless, the hero has some modicum of intelligence because he's like, hey, maybe taking a convertible wouldn't be the best of ideas. So I'm going to go over to Bill's house and steal his car. And that's what he does. 
But first, we have to do another mandatory first person sequence. Except this time, it's pure melee. What do you say, folks? What do you say? While I can definitely appreciate this game's ambition, Jesus Christ, the execution. <laughs> well, you're seeing it for yourself, folks. You're seeing it for yourself. But after clunkily killing enough zombies, we make our way over to Bill's house. And then our hero's like, hey, not only will I steal Bill's car, but I'll steal his guns because he's an NRA member. So our hero goes down to the basement, and it's at this point that I begin to suspect that the game was pretty much made as they went along with it. And what I mean by that is, from an artistic and stylistic standpoint, the game looks completely different now. The graphics look cleaner, things don't look as hazy and washed out and cel shaded as they did earlier on in the game. It's pretty amazing that the game is so inconsistent with its artistic direction. But anyway, we have a puzzle here, which is basically crack this safe that has only four numbers on it. Now we could brute force our way through it, but the game would allow that. Instead, we have to click around on everywhere and find enough hints to then figure out the very obvious code. And once we do that, we just get bullets because the gun is scattered throughout the room. And then we have to go click on everything and find the gun parts. And then the game has some crafting in it. Yeah, this game has crafting in little air quotations because let's be honest with you, it's just a sloppily named inventory puzzle. We assemble all the items to build the gun and boom, we craft a gun. It's really stupid. But hey, now that we have a gun, we're attacked by some zombies. Oh my god, this game. So after killing enough zombies, the dude makes it back to his house to save his daughter, who's still in her room. Oh my god! <laughs> Look at that little girl! Her head is ginormous! <laughs> I honestly broke out laughing the very first time I saw this little girl. You know what? I honestly think that the little girl's head is the same size as the adult heads. Is that like a normal thing in real life? Who came up with this character model? It's really funny. Oh my, she's like an alien. And what's also pretty funny is how this game tries to impress you. Look, we have a driving sequence now. A completely unnecessary driving sequence where we're driving to the police station in a world filled with way too many buses. I guess they really support public transportation around here. And yes, this car handles is about as poorly as you would expect. It's all sharp angles and very little control and don't think about going anywhere outside of the road because there's an unnatural invisible wall everywhere. So convenience of conveniences. Right when our hero is driving past the police station, Leo comes out and he's like, yo, give me a ride. And sure enough, our hero picks him up because... Well, it's not a terrible idea that dude's a cop, he probably has a gun, and at least knows how to survive somewhat in a dangerous situation. So the game makes no bones about it. It's definitely a zombie plague. And then our two heroes start to figure out what the hell they should do. Leo's like, I want to go to Washington, D.C. because my aunt, the woman who raised me because my parents are dead, by the way, I'm an orphan. She lives there and I want to protect her. And also, the military will probably be there because, you know, the president lives there and there may be a bunker. That's pretty much word for word what he says. And then the little Mormon dad guy, he's like, hmm, I want to go to Oregon because my father lives out there. A father who our dude hasn't even bothered to call once throughout this game. I mean, for all he knows, Oregon's been overrun. Actually, now that I think about it, never once in this game do we get like a television station saying breaking news, rabies virus sweeps over America or anything like that. So it's impossible to say whether or not this is just affecting wherever this shithole is or if it's a plague that's affecting all of America. So now we get our final save point because we've reached the very end of this chapter. We go back home, our character changes his clothes, and then proceeds to tell the other two, hey, before we leave to Washington, because yeah, that's what they're doing now, they're going to Washington, D.C., I gotta do something involving killing my wife in the basement, but he doesn't quite say that directly, but yeah, pretty much that's what he's going to do now. <laughs> Thank you.
So welcome to what I guess is supposed to be a sad moment in this game. I don't feel any particular emotional attachment to any of these characters because they're not exactly well developed. Their only form of communication prior to her being zombified was just, hey, go get this thing for me. Oh well. He apologizes for everything, implying that he's been doing a lot of fucked up stuff his whole life. And then we get a choice, whether or not to kill her. I chose to leave her be because why not? If we're never gonna go back here, does it really matter? And then we get the dramatic conclusion where the guy looks all sad. How sad. Yeah, this guy's face looks way better than the face we saw earlier on in the game. Really making me believe that this game was made up as they went along with it. And also making me believe that they used their earlier YouTube videos for the cutscenes. And since those earlier YouTube videos, they actually got better at making character models, but I guess they were just lazy or just wanted to be cheap. And rather than make new cutscenes, they just put the old ones in the game. Wow. Well, and that does it for Plan Z Chapter 1. Our hero leaves Green... Green... Green Bay, Wisconsin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh my god, I think I figured out why this game's so weird and so inconsistent. Wait a minute, let's go back to the house. There was a football jersey framed there in the kitchen. Oh my god, it's a Green Bay Packers jersey. Number 12, that's Aaron Rodgers. Holy shit, Packers fans made this game, that's why it's so bad. Zero out of five worst game ever. Of course a Packers fan would keep an Aaron Rodgers jersey in their kitchen. That's where they keep the cheese, the damn cheese heads.